It's Sunday. Why are you yelling? Do it again. It's Sunday. Why are you yelling? A little more. Oomph. It's Sunday. Why are you yelling? Love that. That was good. That was good. You were smiling. You I looked happy. I got into it. Well, you were like, put a little oomph in it. And, you know, no one's told me to put a little oomph in something in a long time. I need more oomphs in my life. Imagine a girl said that during sex. Like, put a little more oomph to it. What would you do? You know, anytime I, I think feel, I would slap the shit at her. Yeah, like my first reaction. Would, no, my I'd be so aggressive, probably. <laughs> when she's put a little more oomph in it, it's like my hips just start going like a jackhammer. Yeah, because like, you didn't want this. I know what you wanted, but this wasn't it. Anytime like a girl gives you direction during sex, it's it just gets you mad. Yeah, it's like, a big. Uh, it's, how dare you? It's a big ego killer. Yeah. I had a girl once tell me to stop breathing so loud. I remember you told me that, and yeah. you said you almost passed out. Yeah, because I was holding my breath. That's fucking embarrassing. That sucks for you, because like. I think if any girl knows, I just breathe loud, no matter what, like, sex, eating, breathing, The girls know, talking. they just see you, and they're like, like that's yeah. a big breath, <laughs> big, big breath guy. Big breath guy, so. <laughs> needs a lot of breath to function. Heather's never said that, so, thank okay. God. Well, I can guarantee you she's thought it. Well, sometimes I'll wake up, and I'll look right at it, like, I'll turn around and wake up, you know, do little cute eyes opening, she's like, you were breathing so loud, <laughs> oh my God, this is how I'm going to start my day. Well, it's better that than during sex. Yeah, I guess. How you been? How was uh, this week, business wise? It's fucking fine. Not as busy. Uh no. Last week, like really, last week set me up for future success. It's one of those weeks. Really, it was one just of those like foundational weeks that like I just had so much bullshit to do that once I got rid of it, it was like not smooth sailing, but I feel a lot, um, a lot calmer this week. Didn't have a lot of because it was like I did double the work last week so that I can only do half the work this week. Okay, so you've just been chilling. Which means I'm probably fucked next Reaping week. the benefits? Yeah, well, not really, but... Do you do that a lot? Like, you'll just work so hard one week, coast another week, and then have to just do it where you could just be consistent throughout? Not, like, purposely. Sometimes it's just, like, I don't have as many things to do now because I did so much last week. Like, I don't do it on purpose. I'm not like, oh, I'm going to get ahead next week by doing it all this week. It's just, like, I have so much to do that... I don't know. I don't really know. I just, like, fucking... Whatever's put in front of me, I'm just like, I have... To I have to get this done. I have to do this. You know, one of those fucking things. I did watch the behind the business with um, the sleeper CEO. Man. Yeah. He's just fucking silent assassin. Dude, dude. He, you got to watch out for those guys. Yeah, he's uh, he's super, super sharp. I wish I had more time with him, but he told me when we got on, he had to he had like a hard stop at 2.30. Where, whenever it was, it was one hour from then. So I was like, which was fine. I honestly was probably at the end of the questions that I had for him, but like I could have got into some like Q and a from people on Twitter and stuff, which I would have liked to dive into his head a little bit more um, on that. But I was, uh, I was glad to get through it. And like, like I told you, it was one of the more, or one of the less conversational ones I've had. You before. were legit interviewing. Yeah. I, w- I was pretty much interviewing him. I didn't feel like, not that I had anything to add to the conversation, but it's all things that he's obviously thought about, you know? So it didn't feel like it was, um, it didn't feel as conversational, which is fine, obviously, because you get a lot of the the audience gets a lot of value when it's like we're all learning from a dude like that. Yeah. You know? So I thought it was well. You uh, told me that you felt like it wasn't like your best, and I thought it was awesome. I thought you did a great job, and I you weren't really talking about what you were interviewing him. It wasn't your best in a sense of, I guess, comfortableness, and then also like how you usually interview people on this behind the business. But it was very insightful. I got a lot of value out of it. And what did what did you like learn from it? Like, what were some of the parts? Because you're right. Because I got a lot of I, even in the comments, people were saying this it was is fantastic. It was, this is amazing. By far, by far and away, the best feedback I've had from one of those. Yeah. And it, I was really surprised when I put it up. I was like, I don't, I don't think like I think it, it was just like a short one that almost not not seemed like it was forced, but like anytime one of those goes for fewer than like. 90 minutes or so i almost feel like it's not a letdown but it didn't go as 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 smoothly as some of the other ones because some of them go up to an hour and a half two hours and conversation just flows but that one was like 45 minutes so i was like i don't know if we got enough value in there i think it's it goes to also saying when sometimes you're like that movie could have been done really short and been awesome and i think that can go with interviews too sometimes you think it's going well since you covered everything you wanted but this time you had short amount of time so you just went right to the uh, middle part that you needed yeah and i think Throughout from the beginning to the start, full value. And, you, I mean, your interviewing skills are getting, like, tremendous. So, it, it looked so comfortable. He was not surprised at certain um, questions, but you could see you did your research. You had questions that you wanted answered, and he was very willing to do it because he could see that you did put um, the time in 
maybe usually that people don't. Yeah. Because I guess people that are interviewing him right now, if he does do interviews, isn't about the fantasy football content. It's about how'd you build this business and now you're competing with these big wigs in the industry. Yeah, and before I do those interviews, I typically... I, I try to watch as many, if they do any video interviews, I try to watch as many of them as I can to get a feel for like one, the person, but also like, it's so, it's so easy to just give such a boring interview. And it's like, why, like the reason I do this series, is cause I want to learn from them. You know, like I'm not doing it just so people can be like, Oh, he interviewed the guy from sleeper. I'm like, I'm trying to fucking learn like why he became successful, like what he's doing, how he sees the industry or how he sees different business tactics. So when I when I watch the interviews, I'm like, this is such a fucking boring question. Like, I don't, you know, I don't care why you did this or like what you're, you know, that's why I'm always like in the intro. I'm like, Oh, give us like a very quick background of a lot of people like, Oh, why'd you do this? And why'd you do this? I'm just like, I, like no one cares. No one gets value from that. Like, I understand yeah. it's like a, an integral piece of like who you are at this point, but I'm trying to ask you questions that cater to the audience and also cater to, you know, you, you, you see that, um, you see that, um, you see the series itself kind of evolving as I evolve as a person you know like the beginning of it was the first season was very much like um me introducing different people from different backgrounds like how did you make it in the industry like let's get newer new coming people scale let's get new coming people ideas of how they can break out in the industry because that's where I was at that point and now you hear a lot of the questions I'm asking like much more top level business related like yo where how are you thinking about running your business at this time during this time of the year you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. it, it's evolving with my actual personal life the questions i ask i think no i agree with that and i think with him especially when i was watching it it was very interesting to see that he was like he has a huge background right before uh fans football living traveling and just learning life and then he decided that this is what he wanted to do with his friend that was an engineer and then you know six of them and they were hustling some of them were like hey i just had a baby i can't go into the garage with you full time and risk this. Cause I have, um, so things, but they all were grinding together cool backstory and you know, and that's awesome. And you can kind of see that here and other companies, you know, people, you know, in all parts of the company, some people can't afford to just, Hey, fuck it. I'm going to just follow you. Cause I know I believe in you, but right now that belief doesn't pay my bills. So therefore I'll give you what I can in my off time. And that's what people have to understand. Your off time is where you're going to make your money. This is where you have to just, suck it up, wake up, do it. You know, people would go to, go to school and full-time job. And I think that's when they're most productive too, because instead of having that eight hour day, you're having 12 to 15 hour days and you might be tired, but your body gets used to it. You're just grinding and it doesn't even seem. I really like believe in, I really believe in like, uh, I think it's Newton's law. It's like an object in motion yeah. stays in motion. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like if you yeah. sit on the couch all day, you're like, I didn't do anything. Why am I so tired? It's like, because you're you doing you're tired yeah. all day. You're mm -hmm. doing tired shit all day. You know what I'm saying? Like once you start going though, once you get outside, you start moving, you start filming, you start creating, you start generating ideas. Like it's a compound effect in in your brain. And it's funny because like a dude like Nan who has such a strong background financially investing, mm -hmm. tech wise and stuff. I've found there there are probably like four or five, maybe six really successful brands within the fantasy space. It's them. It's uh, the footballers. It's Roto Underworld with Matt Kelly. All of the people that have started those were doing something similar before that like they were either in the in the tech startup space or like the software space or the marketing space or something like mm -hmm. that and you could see over the long run like those are the companies that are standing out because they see it differently they see it more than just like a passion project related about fantasy football content and when you attack it that way you separate yourself like an enormous amount yeah no for sure and i think one part of the interview i don't know if you have been thinking about it or or you'd kind of like brush it off maybe you don't think it's something that you thought it was important, but you know, always seeing outside perspective that I think, I, I think I know what you're going to say. Yeah. yeah go. But like, I'm not in your business, but I'm, I'm definitely part of your business. And I always think, I think up until this year, I, you have always said like, this is a business, business, business. Now it is a business. And now I think you have to treat it as such. And I think it has me personally have seen it. Like you have to start acting like a boss essentially, you know, like have those tough conversations and start realizing what's important, what's not. And like with employees, you know, and I think what he interested said, like when you take money and don't take it when you need it, take it when you don't need it. And that's one part that stuck with me. And I was like, that makes perfect sense because you don't want to sound desperate. You don't want to, but the money you do take also helps you expand faster, quicker, and then also can kind of propel you to get better. And I want your thoughts on, does that resonate with you? Do you think we, at this point, you don't need the money, 
but some of this money could help to propel things and maybe get people on board and just get, I think, the extra shot that this company needs to go to the next level. Yeah, it, it's it was interesting, and I, I was pretty sure that was what he was going to say. It makes sense from like a common sense standpoint because mm-hmm. one of the tough parts about raising money is like having to convince people that you're worth it and when you're just showing them you're worth it without having to convince them like of course they want on board and they want to jump onto the moving train that's rolling fucking <clears throat> it's rolling hot i think um it's probably much easier from his standpoint knowing working with a bunch of startups or working with a bunch of tech companies like he knows exactly where that money's going to go so if he's like we're raising 2 million for our series a he knows like okay 3.6 or 360,000 is going to go to website developers, you know, for uh, another 120 is going to go to full stack developers, some shit like that, where that's why I ask those questions. And I wish I wish I had more time or more like not even stuff I could put on camera, but like have conversations with people like that. So I know logistically if I were to raise money, you know, it's, it's cool to be like, Oh, I don't need the money. So I'm going to raise it now to like push us to the next level. But you also need to know what you're doing with that money. And that's what like makes me nervous about taking money is like, it makes sense from a, top level theory perspective Mm -hmm. but when you've never actually done it before it could stab you in the back you know what i'm saying no i get that and i i was thinking about it a lot this whole week since i've watched the thing and i was thinking about how like obviously if you took money right now you might have two or three three things where you would push and but then you have extra money what do you do with it you know Mm -hmm. and you don't want to just take money that you owe money and you know it just keeps piling on piling on but um I was thinking, like, you know how you did with Snacks and Animal? You had, like, a State of the Union type of situation? Yeah. I I think you should start doing that quarterly with the team, like, via Zoom, because everyone's everywhere. Like, everyone that does something to this company, tell me your ideas. Like, I'll go, I'll be on it. I'm taking notes. Like, we're figuring out. And then, then you can now all be on one board, be like, okay, this is what we're focusing on. This is what we think we're going to do better. How can we make it better? What's the end project? So then this might be something we need to raise money for, you know? And then I think, you know, and I think now is the time to start actually making this a business in a sense of having structure. I like you say last week, you said there's so many things going on. I don't even know what's happening, which is fine, but you, (laughs) but it's not really is. Yeah. You know, but like, I think there didn't, you need to have meetings. You need to have a quarterly thing where you can be like, this is where the breakdown is. You guys want to start getting paid. This is how we're going to do it. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. It's my, it's my job to do that. And that's, I think most of it, like I realized from the conversation with, um, with you, you know, about Mike and then mm-hmm. some stuff behind the scenes and just thinking more about that entire situation, you know, how I put these blinders on and I'm very, you know, not, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm like, I'm a visionary, but like, I look at things long term. And I don't, I, you know, I do that in life too. I'm like, if yeah. I, you know, something down the road, like I let the petty shit kind of fall sideways and that will take care of itself as long as I'm working towards the longer goal. I'm starting to realize that like those short term things that you're just not looking at are the things that add up to be the long term thing, you know? Exactly. And it has me questioning, not necessarily like my leadership, but it has me questioning my gut instinct on certain things. And that's always something I followed, obviously, you know, like I, I follow my gut, I follow my instinct, I follow my heart on most things. But some situations recently, I, I think I'm going to come out of 2021 learning more about business, I can already tell, than I've learned in probably the three or four years prior. Agreed. Um, so, yeah, this this where I'm sitting right now, I feel not unsettled, but I feel like there's a lot that I need to figure out within a pretty short um, pretty short time frame. And it's 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 a it's an attention to detail thing for me. I'm I'm, I'm much I'm always looking long term, but there's always so much I miss uh, along that path. And I need to be aware of that. I think, do you think right now, if you was anonymous poll and BDGE saying, do you think Nick's a good leader? Do you think you'd come out winning that between on the team? Yeah. Um, if it's just a black or white, yes or no, Mm -hmm. I think that it would be a unanimous. Yes. Yeah. I hope, I think it would be, uh, if there was like a explain optional, portion of it i'm sure there would be some notes and suggestions in there yeah um i think for the most part like my leadership style is very hands-off and i'm not like a micromanager at all and maybe that's i think that's a problem yeah but i'm not saying you need to micromanage i don't like to micromanage my employees but a checkup where it's 
in a professional setting helps. Yeah. I'm just like very not professional with that shit. Like every once in a while, I'll just like text people and be like, how are we doing? Like, you need any help from me? You need anything from me? And then that's pretty much the extent of yeah, it. Yeah. Like we have monthly touch bases where it's just like take them for a cup of coffee and then like, tell me what's up. What's up? Where, where do you want to be? Where, yeah. what, do, what can I do to help? You know? Yeah, and like I'll, I would love to do that in person. I just yeah. fucking hate that. We, none of us are in person with anything. And, but that's the thing. Like, even though you hate it and you have to do it through zoom, you know, yeah, or something no. like that. It sucks. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll, I'll get better at it. And honestly, like just doing these conversations, uh, there's like shit I've done already that I wouldn't have done had I not felt like you're holding me accountable to doing it. Yeah. And I fucking hate it. These, these are Pissing live. These are posted. So yeah. we don't need to make a list. It's all out there. Yeah. It's annoying, <laughs> but it's good. It's obviously going to push me forward in that sense. And I started thinking about when, um, you know, people reach out to you and even other companies. Do you think anybody's ever qualified for a job? Like, with me no in general like do you think anybody's ever qualified like uh, do you think you need to be qualified for it's a, a good job? question i would yeah. say no because if you're qualified for a job you want the next job exactly you know what i mean yeah. like you know you don't if you're qualified for a job that means you're settling for that job exactly yeah yeah and then you should always shoot for the stars yeah you should always shoot for a job where you're actually having to learn on the go that's a good question i think that's yeah like who the fuck ever applies for a job they're they're qualified except for when i applied for domino's driver in high school i'll never forget that they denied me did you even have a car at that point i don't know i would have got a car if they if they fucking accepted me it made me so sad That's exactly. i thought like being a delivery driver was like the coolest thing in the world yeah, like you yeah. didn't do you got paid for just like driving around listening to music yeah it's a good like buffer job if you have nothing yeah like, i at was the like point. 14 years old probably 16 actually no i, I, could, I had to be older because i didn't have a license had to be in 17. Yeah. I was probably like borderline college. It might have been like when I came home from college <laughs> for a summer shit. Damn. I had I had a big dreams. Big dreams. Big city dreams. <laughs> Speaking of, I've uh, looked at a few apartments over the last couple of days. How did that go? Not good. Fucking terrible. All the places were really cool, but they're on, I looked at a place like, they're all like on the outskirts of the neighborhoods that I want to be in. And it's like fine being in the area, but like. I didn't like the actual area that the exact apartment was in. So like, it's, it's like if I'm going to get a place and pay for a place that's expensive, like I want to walk outside and be like, I love the area that my fucking apartment's in, you know what yeah. I mean? Not like, Oh, the area that I like is like four blocks down that way, but I live in a shitty area. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at right now. I'm going to, I'm looking at a place tomorrow, uh, at like one o'clock that's on a really fucking popping street that I'm actually excited to look at, but I feel like there's something Are you in clo anywhere close to Hudson Yards you're looking. No. It's like downtown, but I mean, I'm sure it's like a 15 minute subway from Hudson Yards. I don't take subways. <sighs> then you're fired. <laughs> it's fucking simple. Um, yeah. I mean, they're listen, like I, I want to move downtown eventually. Like when I was helping, I helped Mel and Shannon move their shit this weekend. And how's like, just, their apartment? Small as fuck. No, it sucks. Yeah. They're, they're having a, um, C Corona party, a house. Yeah. Basically, I guess a housewarming party on like the ninth. I think, uh, Mel literally like decided what date it was and then DM'd Heather like immediately for some reason, letting her know about it. And the, I'm like really, she didn't tell me that asshole. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really concerned with like how that party's going to go. It seems like it's one of those apartments where it's a, it's a pregame apartment. Mm. It's not a, it's Don't not a, there. it's stay not a full there. out party. Yeah. Like yeah. you walk in, there's a long ass hallway and then like the kitchen and living room is the same room mm -hmm. and it's really not that big. And then they both have their own bedrooms, but like they're pretty small too. And it's like not, a, you know, it's yeah. fine living. It's you, just like you live in the city. You're going to yeah. have a small apartment. Yeah. But it's not like it's a, kind of what they had upstairs. I would. Yeah. I would say, uh, they're upstairs. That was not a party apartment. Their upstairs was more conducive to a party than their new one. I, wow. I believe mm -hmm. I would say, but their Heather's vaccinated. So she's ready to go anywhere. Okay. Yeah. The area is better. Just, obviously we're just fucked. Yeah. Right across the street. They had, um, they had like this pop and brunch spot and I was like, fuck. I, and everyone was there. I was like, I forgot how much energy there was downtown it made me forget you that i've got a realtor again i've i live in new york what do you mean like every just, place i found is not like from finding a realtor it's just like finding a place and there just happened to be a realtor oh, in okay. the way, i know? thought maybe something you're not finding or uh well the i've looked at three places the first one was the thing i tweeted out mm -hmm. about that lady yeah. coming back to me i went to that apartment um and then she took me to another apartment too and like i don't i don't like her at all like she's nice in person obviously um, but like, she's not very helpful. Yeah. She's just like, do you want it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like that. It's like, I don't know. 
and she wants me to sign like a two year lease right now, and it's like expensive. I was like, everyone's doing two year lease so they can make their money back. Yeah, because everyone's like three months free. Yeah, yeah. This, so. and and like I'm shooting for places that are listed as expensive because I know I'll be able to knock, knock it, it down, down a lot. Yeah, yeah. so. We'll see. I'll, I'll see how tomorrow... Tomorrow looks like a cool setup. I just need to figure out, like... This place is too much space, and when you have too much space, you start buying things mm -hmm. to fill that space, and I have too many things here that I, like, don't need, and it's making me anxious. So I'm like, smaller place would be better. I just have to... There's three three or four main things that I need in the whatever new space I get. Yeah. It needs to be, like, the hangout couch area, which doesn't need to be this fucking big. I need a space for people to record with like you animal snacks i need a space for myself my desk and then my bedroom mm -hmm. so it's like four main spaces so i need to figure out um a place that allows me to have all those things it's so funny it. i feel like asking that in new york city is asking a lot it's asking a lot yeah and i have to pay for it like that's the thing i feel like you should start looking at two bedrooms so then that one room could be a studio so that's yeah so that's you know? like that's like kind of what i've been looking at i'm no. not i'm not putting that off i think uh i i think what i'll end up doing is maybe putting my desk maybe in my bedroom or maybe in like the corner of somewhere. I just need to set up like a normal studio where yeah. it's like, it's too open up there mm -hmm. where it's like, I, I can't control the lighting. I can't really control anything about it. And like for a long time, I kind of liked it. I was like, Oh, you get to see the background just to see what's going on. But I'm like, maybe I set up like a real video studio for myself. You know? Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. Also, like, I'm not against re-signing this, this lease at all. Yeah. I mean, if you are doing a year, we could definitely enhance this to make it like, yeah, better. yeah, it's fine. I don't know. This is it was it's a it's a pain in the ass going from up here to downtown now to look is at fucking apartments though. Yeah, it was like a twenty five minute subway ride and like Ooh. the places aren't all like really close, so I gotta like hop on a city bike that's like another ten minutes to the other side of, of town and shit. So it's kind of annoying, but whatever. You figure it out, you got some time. Yeah, I'm also the other the other thing too is like while the prices are down, financially, like I, I still want to have another year where I know things are like really solid and back mm -hmm. from Corona before I like commit to another. The only reason I like, the only reason I, I financially committed to this place was because we were in such a good spot the year before. And I was like, we're going to grow like three X. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, be like yeah. flush. And mm -hmm. then that didn't happen. And now I'm like, okay, if we have another year, like we did this year, we're going to be fine. But like, we can't keep upgrading everything every year. If the money stays the same, same or like grows a little, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm, I'm like still hesitant to, um, pull a lease that's like this expensive again you know what i'm saying yeah like, just because you never know what's in the future right so i'm down down I'm, I'm fine downgrading the space as well as like the monetary action i put into it mm -hmm. i just need to make sure it has everything equipped in it that makes sense i mean you can't like you said you're not moving just to move you're moving for the right spot right location yeah. you're not really um because this is ready made and if you got to do it you got you could stay here it's not like you you hate this apartment yeah no, just that's the fine. Area. i um I, I think I told you that they offered me like 200 off the lease here plus two months free. Oh, you didn't tell me that. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the, the rent would basically go down almost like a thousand or $1,100 a month if I stayed here, which is obviously, you know, that's a, big. It, yeah. It's, it's, it's perfect. Um, I could probably negotiate more cause I know when Shannon and Mel were leaving, they offered them three months free if they mm -hmm. stayed. So I could probably pull another month and have that rent fucking come down another $300. I something. mean, that's at that point. Yeah. At that why point, wouldn't you stay? Yeah. So. That's interesting. But yeah, keep looking, and then you should just set a date. If you don't find anything in this date, then you start. Yeah, and it's tough because it's not like a ton of new apartments are opening up. It's almost like all the same ones are staying, have been open and are staying open. So it's like, it's it, typically apartments in New York City when you're when you're hunting, it's like new ones pop up every day, and then they close two days later. It's not I really like, like that, you know. It's like yeah. this: you go on Street Easy like one week, and the same apartments are still there the week later. So it's like it's hard to. You know, yeah, I feel like excited about something once new. people start getting vaccinated and everything, New York will be back pretty yeah. quick. And that's my other thing, though. It's like if I don't invest the money now, I risk all the rents going back up by next year. Mm -hmm. You know, if I do stay here for another year. So it's kind of a tough situation. But I'm, I'm, I think I'm only going to make this move if it like really if it really feels right. You know, yeah. Well, speaking of tough situations, it's funny. We talked about um, off camera last last week, I think, about work. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll go back to New Jersey. What do you think? And, you know, and funny enough, my um store manager talked to me the other like two days after we talked and was like hey listen like she moved from cali to come to this st a store mm -hmm. and it's just like with corona and everything it just it, it wasn't the life she thought it was gonna be and i understand and like me and her have butted heads before but i totally respect that she came by herself tried to live in new york and then corona hit no family here and had to be you know by herself for a full year and then um, it's usually two two year contracts when you um move with the company. Mm. But she's like, listen, my contract's up in November. 
with or without Tiffany, I'm going back to Cali. And That's I was a like, hard ass statement right there. Yeah, and I was like, all right, like shit. Then she's like a Tiffany lover. Like I've never seen someone that rides that brand on skin like her. Huh. And um, I was like, and the reason I was thinking about going to Jersey was because a opportunity, b I thought she wasn't ever leaving. And now I have a got like a timeline. I have ten months to prove to my director that I deserve to be. So you take her, that job, her right hand man, you know, and it's. I mean, that's the job I want. Well, you wouldn't. She's gone. You wouldn't be a right hand man. You'd be her. No. No. Well, so it goes. There's three. Are you saying it's, there's the a director, director manager? Oh, and the assistant. manager's gonna. Yeah, she's bouncing. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So it would like that would be my next step. That's what I was looking in Jersey, and it's tough, you know, to think of because. They don't overlap. So whatever happens in Jersey is probably going to be between August and September. And if I just don't do that, then it's not guaranteed I get that position. So, you know, like... Who would take it, though, if you if it wasn't I you? mean, New York's a big market, and uh, Hudson Yards is a good store, good exposure, and everything like that. So you never know who would come knocking. And it happened before where I, I was the best candidate, and then someone with my exact resume came, plus 11 years' experience. Came. So when she talked to you about it, though, was she like... I'm going to be like recommending you or she was no, just yeah, straight yeah. up she, just she like, was like you know. She's like, obviously you're like the guy I, I would want to um, take my position, but you know, it's up to um, my director who she picks. I'm going to talk to my director tomorrow, but I'm going to have like 10 months to try to figure it out. Or like, do I do the safe bet, apply for New Jersey or what do I do? You know, what do you think would be the best situation for that? Um, because I could get double fucked or I could like what's play it gut, safe. What's to, your gut feeling on it? Well, I was super pumped when like the moment I was going to say, it, this yeah. is like pretty, this was like, this has never happened. You were it, deciding between like, do I go back to New Jersey or do I like not really have another option? Just keep doing what I'm doing. And then all of a sudden, two days later, a new option that's exciting presents itself. Like mm -hmm. fucking destiny, dude. Yeah. You think so? Because like, Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a big ass hobby toe. Yeah. Fucking it's, everything. Up. It was just crazy how it uh, turned out to like, a line, but it's also going to be a risk because if I don't apply for Jersey and then say someone else comes and I just get double fucked and you, me being a very prideful person, if someone comes, but I'll also that, then out. but that leaves you where you were regardless before that, but two days before she told you that she was leaving mm -hmm. your choices were to stay or go to Jersey. Yeah. But so now if you get fucked, then you're just where you were before if you hadn't taken the Jersey job. Yeah. But now I'm just staring at somebody else that took my job that, and now I don't so have the first so job. So it's like a, it's like a mental thing. Now. Oh, yeah. Or it's 100%. like your hopes just got pumped up, so now it's like there's no returning back to the oh, ground yeah. level. Nope. All right. Well, we'll, we'll stay tuned on that. You got to work hard for the next 10 months. 10 months. I have to, like, make an outline, try to figure out how I can prove to her that I, th this is my position. Like, this shouldn't be. Is it going to be hard? Like, what the fuck do you actually have to do? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not hard. It's just, like. I literally have to just do all her work, and she just does a lot. Like it's just what like, is her work? It's just like a lot of charts and stupid shit, like your presentations to like the big guys. The why we're you want to practice we are. with us? Not with us, but like to us. Of like my job? Yeah, put like you can present charts to us. Oh like, yeah, like the the, the fucking <laughs> diamond <laughs> industry in Kenya right now. Is Kenya, how dare you? It's you Botswana mean? sort. What do you? Is that a place? Botswana. Why the fuck was that the first thing that popped? What the fuck is Botswana? It's like a region actually of where diamonds we source from. Are those blood diamonds? No, it's not. We're very we're a hundred percent ethical, and it's proven that we know where every diamond. It's we crazy ever that you guys mined. are ethical with only unethical people working for you. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> if you could rattle off a few names <laughs> of who uh, works for Tiffany's, that you know, it's probably very yeah, unethical. I know three, all three dumb motherfuckers. Three of the dumbest motherfuckers I know. <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what happens in the next ten, ten months, but also a little nervous because I know how my head works. You know, I yeah. don't want to be my biggest. I mean, I'd be, I'd be excited too. Like that just that shit just came out of nowhere. What are you swiping right over there? On my phone screen. You oh. think I'm sitting here on a fucking dating app, you cunt. Yeah, I don't know. Nah. How's your love life going? Good, I think. I don't know. I was uh was at her apartment till last night. I didn't want to sleep there, so like. She hates that, so she makes me stay until she falls asleep. I'm just like you deserve that because you need to. I agree. Like I do it. Like, I don't but you should sleep there and just. I can't sleep though. Yeah, and the fucked like, up part about it is I came home last night. And I still couldn't sleep. Like I didn't sleep well last night at all. So I should have just stayed. But she was working the fucking morning anyways. She called me the Facetimes at seven thirty. So are you coming over? And I'm like, no, you psycho. Seven thirty. Yeah, she was like kidding, but like also not kidding. 
Yeah. I, I went to her house like the day before in the morning, but it's because she had like a call or something. She had an interview. She, she's interviewing for a fucking grad school in Amsterdam. I'm like, bro. Like to go? Yeah. She's like not actually going to go, but she's like, she started applying when she first moved here. She got like a job. She moved to New York in, I think it was like November or some shit. Mm-hmm. She got like a job interview in like LA and they're like, they wanted her to like pack up her shit and move there. And then she started applying to grad school and for some reason applied in Amsterdam and like, I don't really know. She's fucking all over the place. And she's mad at me. She's like, you're moving downtown. Like, she's not actually mad, but she, fucking doesn't matter. Doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> I was thinking this week, too. Everyone in, in their jobs, like, likes to be known. You know, like, to be, like, liked and all that. And I was thinking, like, you kind of push through in a fantasy football industry, and you're kind of known in it. Is does, Do you ever, like, think about that? Like, that you like you're kind of a known person in a, an industry. Um, I I I do, but like I don't take it seriously only because like, but like why not? It's your job because our industry is literally Twitter. Like you don't understand just how everything runs through Twitter. Like that our industry is. Tw- Imagine like Tiffany's industry was just like everyone you knew was just on Twitter, and like that's how you engage with people. <laughs> you look at it as a joke. You know what I mean? Um, but it's true. Like actually, funny funny kind of uh, last last night. I was um, I was leaving for her apartment, and I like put my headphones on. I was about to walk out the door, and there was someone opened up like a clubhouse room. It was like a fancy thing, and like two two guys that are like pretty big in the industry started mm-hmm. it. And it was just like a whatever. It was, it was a room where they were talking to other content creators, and I was I was just gonna put my headphones on and like listen to it as I was walking to her apartment. And then like as I'm about to walk out the door, like the host of the room, there's like up 100 120 people in here just two people on the stage they're like oh, i want to bring someone on stage that like has really like paved this path and like i want to i want to like talk to him and let him speak to the room and shit and i was like this motherfucker's about to call me <laughs> up i know it and he's like nick what, you want to come up here and like talk and i was like fuck so i got up on stage and i was talking to like 100 fucking 20 people in the clubhouse room for like i think i went on for so long to be honest with you i wasn't really paying attention and it took me i was like very surprised it was like out of nowhere and i talked probably for like 20 to 30 minutes and like they fucking loved it and like i just i don't know like it makes this shit is like surreal to be honest with that's you. what i'm saying like you, that <laughs> shit's crazy i guess i really take this industry as like a joke though like it's really really fucking fucking silly for back of for lack of a better phrase it's very silly i guess i mean i'm not in it I, I follow a few people and obviously i don't like i see that you guys do stupid shit but it's still an industry that makes a ton of money and people are just yeah i guess I guess I, I think this anytime it's this part of the off season where it's like I start talking more about marketing and business, mm-hmm. I, I feel my impact way more in the space. I don't think like most of the content creators within the space like actually listen to my fantasy content and not f- not because they don't think I'm a like good or whatever. Just like they're doing their own shit, you know? Yeah. Um. So like I don't I don't think of myself as like one of the top creators in the space fantasy wise because my audience is big because they're my audience, not because like there's dudes like Evan Silva and like JJ Zacharyson and like bigger names within the space where everyone listens to their content fantasy stuff. But those eyeballs come to me when we're talking about like content creation within the space. Mm -hmm. So it's like a different, it's it's like a, it's like an industry within an industry almost in a sense. It's like hard to explain, but it's all fucking silly. It's all fucking stupid. (laughs) Yeah. That that was like the worst like I have no idea what you said there. No, no, like oh, zero, man, I like I zero. Knew. Like I was just staring through you because you were Are you going. Sure you're just not listening. No, I was listening. And I was like, w- you like that fucking art piece? Look, we're a video. We're a video of people now. We don't do podcasts. Big Fuck, video guys. Fucking lazy people do podcasts. <laughs> fucking bitch. You gonna explain that again, or you're just over it? Explain what? <laughs> oh, the, what we just talked about? Yeah, dude. I'm I'm confused. Okay, so you say like I'm well known within the industry. So do you think you're well known in the fantasy football industry? Now, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. if someone says Nick Urklano in the fantasy football, whatever thing they did in Las Vegas, I w- I, they I would think, be like. I, th- I would say like, I don't know if I'm like the most well known, but like I would say a large majority of like the actual made, the people that are relevant in the industry right now, I would say I'm, I'm relatively well known to them. Okay. But what I'm saying is like those people probably don't watch my fantasy specific content yes you know where okay. most people in the industry would watch their fantasy specific content they know me because i talk about this kind of shit like business marketing content within the fantasy space like i think mm. that's how the what they know me as you know what i'm okay. saying so while everybody like you're saying i'm relevant in the industry the people that are actually relevant in the industry are relevant because of their fantasy content 
I'm relevant in the industry, not because of my fantasy content, I don't think. Okay. Now, you see? That makes sense? Yeah. You okay. did a better job. This I thought time. I explained so good the first time. I mean, maybe I'll watch a YouTube video and I'm going to look in my eyes to see if I actually zoned out or not. I think you did. <laughs> I think we both just didn't sleep last night. <laughs> Dude, I had a horrible sleep. Yeah. I don't even know how to, like, fix that. Do you have anything planned, Um, like, come, like going anywhere soon? Oh, dude, I th- maybe going to San Diego next week. Oh, word. <laughs> um, well, no, because I, I mean, I told you about this. Nick is going to San Diego. I thought he was like in Chile now, so I thought that was. Well, no, it. he's going. He's getting. He's stationed down in Chile for this um, starting in June, but he's going to San Diego next week. And he told me about it like a month ago or a yeah. month and a half ago. Well, he's supposed to be in February, and they pushed it. Yeah, he pushed it to March, and then that date is slowly coming on. And I knew I wasn't going to buy tickets until like week of because they're still fucking cheap, and mm-hmm. it's fine. Um, but now that it's here, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have anything crazy planned like work wise. So I would have had to cancel it. So that might be happening next, I think Thursday. How long are you going for? Oh, like three, four days. Oh, nice. Yeah. Every time you go to Cali, there's like a pit in my stomach that gets <laughs> me nervous that back. you don't come back. But now that you have, you have so much things here, I know it's yeah. because the first like three times you went, I'm like, God damn it. Like I, I've lost Nick. I was really close to the third time, the time I stayed at Nick's on Nick's couch for a long time. Did you come back for... I came back for Alyssa, yeah. 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 Thank God. I remember that. I was, like, so, also scared to move out there, I think. It's just it's just fucking scary picking up your shit. And that's why I give so much credit to my manager. Like, just pick up your shit, go by yourself. That's really hard. And the only places that people do that to are New York and and, uh, and California. Do you and think that's feasible for you to get up and move? You really can't now. Or could not you? now because I own too. I have too much stuff, and we have too much stuff like going on here. But mm-hmm. at the time, it was a hundred percent feasible because the only thing I needed was my laptop and my camera, pretty much. Because I didn't give a fuck about like production quality. Do you think that would have hurt your company? If <sighs> it's so hard to tell. Yeah, it's so hard to tell. Um, Me personally, I thought it was a huge problem. Really? Yeah. At the time, I was I was actually super happy. Like Alyssa came back and like brought you back because like I don't know if I ever said this to you, but like, I thought it was going to be a huge issue of like your concentration there and it would have been more party than um i think um i don't know i think it would have made me focus on different i probably would have logged like all the time it's probably like yeah. the only thing i would have done but that's not, well that would have that benefit, no no that would hurt know? me that would yeah. hurt me but i still think i would have been fine with the fantasy stuff yeah maybe i don't know it's hard to tell it's so hard to like i was operating at a, out of a not good place when i was there so yeah that was tough but yeah, so it's you would say that's the like was your toughest time, like life wise up until this point. Yeah, for sure. That was like when I probably had depression. I think because I came back from California and we were like together for a little while, probably like three or four months, and then when it ended after that, that was what like when I when I fucking sunk deep. That okay, I thought it was reverse. No, nah. like, uh, I don't. The time, no, the no, 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 no. You're so, right. You're right. You're like, right. You're right. I? Okay. I didn't get super depressed after we. When we got back together, like the final, final time, yeah. once that was over, I was like sad, but it was like, we laid it all out on the line and like, it, you know, it the, just didn't work. There was no, yeah, there was no like regrets afterwards. It sucked that it ended, but there's no regrets. The, the, the time before that is when it ended and I was like, fuck, I, I still feel this way and I should have done more and like, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So that was, yeah, it was in between there. And that's why I think I went out there in the first place. So I was like, I was trying to run away from that feeling quickly realized you can't run away from your fucking problems physically. Um, and then we started talking again when I was out in California and that's what brought me back ultimately. Yeah. That's crazy to think that just a female could have just got in your, got in that cold heart of yours. And then, uh, who would, like, who would have known what would have happened to the company? I mean, if I powered through that, like I, I, if I operated through that, I feel like I'm that, that's the fucked up part about me now is like. <laughs> Everything that goes well now, I have this innate feeling that it's going to end badly for me. Like always. It's just, it's just, it's this looming feeling that things are going to go south eventually. And it's like a really, really bad place to be in. That's a huge problem. It's really bad. You could never have a relationship if you do that. I try my best, but like. Because I had an issue. Like I'm. Lucky as fuck, oh, and not lucky, I guess. No, I'm I'm lucky. You're because, definitely fortunate, yeah. Because I've never had to deal with heartbreak. I I, don't, I feel like everyone says you have to deal with that, but uh, I, I, that's why I said I'm not lucky. I'd, I'd pass. If yeah. I could. So I I like up until Heather, I was just drunk hookups. And no one took me seriously. I didn't take myself seriously, 
And I was like, awful shape, depression, everything like that. So I never had to deal with a broken heart. Never had that. Thank God. And then, um, yeah, I, I don't know how that... I'm, I'm good. It's not holding me back from anything. Are you sure, though? Because you, you're not in a relationship right now, but I would say you, you guys are... You would be pissed, vice versa, if you guys, like, fuck someone else. Sure. So you guys are kind of exclusive in a, in a loose term. Sure. But um, is that hindering it? From going further, or say you guys do start dating, you're just waiting for the end. I'm not waiting for the end. I just like, I don't know. Like, I just never feel secure. In you anything. know how like nice Heather is, and she doesn't have a mean like part of her body. Like for some reason, a lot the first like year and a half, two years, I thought like anytime I went out, like she's gonna cheat on me. <laughs> and that was like an insecurity. That was just like me being Steve and like working through. Like the first, I would say from twenty. 13 to 2016 was a tough, even like dating Heather or 20, I, I, the timelines like if even probably the first two years of a relationship, like I was had so many insecurities and depression still that I was working through that I couldn't like project out cause I didn't know how to. And I always keep it in. And that's still to this day, a big problem where like I let it build up, build up and then let go. And then she's like, where the fuck is this coming from? You know? And that's a huge issue. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I, I guess I should have explained this better. Like, once I get a commitment, I think from somebody, mm-hmm. I'm good. Like I, I think that it's fine. The problem is when you start something new with somebody, the feelings there are so strong at first. You know, they're like very all over the place, so everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's and 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 like you, you know, you're you, there's no commitment in the first like six months, eight months of these kind of things, right? There's nothing there, dude. I did Heather in the first three months, but that's true. But really, dude, she said no the first time. Oh yeah. No, she said yes, and then I had a. Then she the next day she's like, "Can you pick me up?" And then she took it back. Well, regardless, it's not about the fucking timetable. It's yeah. about the time before any commitment happens. Is we it, committed in three months. Are you not understanding that I'm saying it's not the point? Oh, okay. The point is up until that point, there's no if before there's any commitment to it. Yeah. There's a lot of like random feelings going on. Okay. You know, well, you so said six to eight months. So before that, it feels like yeah. Well, I was just giving a time frame based on like experiences and shit, Steve. You fucking. I'm trying not to yell right now. Skirt. Needed that. Get back on fucking skirt track. Uh, there's there's a lot going on. So without any sort of like commitment, it makes me feel like anything can happen from any side. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it, it's almost like no one's at fault yet because no one has made a commitment to it. You know? So it's just yeah. like and it, and it would still feel shitty, right? Yeah. What's going on? Nothing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I'm explaining that well. I just no. I get it, but also I'm saying at this point right now, there's no commitment right now. So you think it could just you're preparing yes. just in case it's never a commitment. Do you think that's a wall right now that's hindering that commitment to happen? Maybe. See that? I don't know. You see, you're doing that foot thing, so you know Fuck it's off. marinating. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucked up. I guess whatever. My accountant cold. I need to take care of money. No, you're not. It's the PPP loans. They just give me twenty thousand dollars for no reason. Stop. They're forgivable. Saying things. That's about true. money. <laughs> I'm, I swear, I had a fucking missed call from my accountant, CPA. He just called me. That's the reason why. It was about the PPP loans. All right, we'll call him back. I'm just trying to get into your heart. What do you want from me? Open up to her. I do. No, she's really. Like not. She's like not ready for a commitment. Force it. Can I do that? Yes, then? you can. How? Like, have you have you bought her anything yet? I'm not saying this has any correlation, um, like flowers or yeah. something. Water that she flowers. Liked. I oh, wrote her cute. a really nice card on Valentine's Day. That's awesome. That she like told her. She told me that she told her therapist that it made her feel kind of uncomfortable, but not in like a not not in like a. <laughs> <laughs> that came out wrong. That came out like <laughs> that came out super aggressive. Um, how do I how do I? Write? <laughs> she feels bad that I get her stuff and she doesn't get me things in return. Yeah, you know what I mean. And she's like, it makes me uncomfortable that sometimes like you get me all this stuff and like I don't like go out of my way to 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 do things or get you thing. Not it's not like a feeling thing. Yeah. It was more like a I not overcompensate, but like I do I do a lot of shit for her, and that's just like the way I am. That's like how I I guess I show affection. You're, that's your love language. People in, say. in a, yeah, in a yeah. sense. Because with Heather, I thought I could just buy things. Like, literally, like, here you go. This is $500. Get me off for a couple of weeks. And, like, that literally, I I forgot to get her a Valentine's Day card because I was just, like, so busy. Uh-huh. And, like, you should have seen her SpongeBob eyes coming out. Like, <laughs> and, I was, and, like, when she was in the shower, I, like, wrote, like drew a card 
fucking tears, dude. Yeah, like exactly. you know, and that, that's what she loves, you know. And like, for well, that's me, what I mean. I don't, I, I don't, don't buy her things. Like, yeah. I, I, I'll get her things that I, yeah. I know are like thoughtful towards her. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like I don't, I don't, I'm not like, oh, here's a fucking here's earrings because they're expensive. Yeah, like, and you're, that's, just, you're just gonna like. That's them. how stupid I, yeah. I was, and still sometimes am. And then, um, I got Heather a space heater like like the first <laughs> month we were dating, just because she said she was cold, and she's like, like what? Like a space heater. I was like, well, that's that's not a that's thoughtful though. Yeah, I yeah. I think she it was said just she was weird. Cold. I think it was just like I tried to figure out how to buy something she needed, which is like a space heater. Like, <laughs> like I bought it like at a garage sale. You know me. Like I'm yeah. just like a. Well, I still think that's like kind of thoughtful though. Yeah, but like that's the shit I do too. Yeah, and she's just like like if I bought her a space heater, she's like I feel weird because you're like buying me a space heater and like I'm not gonna buy you a space heater. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I get it. That that's what I meant by like she felt uncomfortable. I think you things. need to talk to her. And then be like, I know, you, like commitment issues for her and whatever. But like this, that's how you interpret, like, l- not love, but like you, you know, you we've had like you, very you deep conversations yeah. about this. Me and her, to be honest, with you. like we're both very aware of like but what she, have well, me yeah. acting like this and, yeah. and her being that way too. So it's it, like, it's, how does she show? Uh, she's like very affectionate towards me when we're together. Mm. And like, that's for right now, that's enough for me that I don't need to push it. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of where I'm coming to like when we're together in the moment, like it, it's, it's really good. But like my lack of long-term security and that this covers like a lot of different things in my life is what makes me nervous all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like I start to prepare for worst case scenario on, or I start to think of worst case scenario on one thing. And then it starts, it may starts making me think of like business and starts making me think of like other aspects of my life and i'm like this is it's like not that big of a deal you do this in business too I'm yeah like starting to realize so so the whole the whole thing with like the whole thing with like mike there's more like behind the scenes that we probably need to talk about with mm-hmm. that but it started making me think like oh this you know what happens if worst case scenario comes out of this situation and then it made me start thinking about like five different things in my life that like oh i didn't even think about worst case scenario for this or for that and i was i was in like a really 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 bad place like the other night actually why didn't you text me? I went to Ella's. Oh, okay. nice. Oh, I'm getting replaced. I went to London's. <laughs> it was like a two minute walk away. And yeah. I like opened up to her and she was yeah. like really fucking, she, she like loved it, you know? Did it <laughs> help? Like, yeah. I felt okay. like way better after. Because I felt bad. I texted you the next day. I was like, I, I'm good. Like, I was I, good too yeah. until, until I'm not sure how much I want to share on here. Yeah. And no, I don't think we need to. But you were good until a certain point And then uh, I was good. And then something else happened. Okay. Something else happened. Where I, basically I talked to some other team members and I got their opinion on it, mm. put it that way. And then it made me start to rethink things again. Yeah. And then I was like, oh man, how do I, it puts me in a situation where it felt like I need to make a black and white decision where I typically can figure out something creative and land in the gray. Yeah. And it made me feel like I, some things need to be black and white. Yeah. And it made me feel like I didn't really have a choice that would end out that would end up okay. And it, that's what made me kind of like fucked up about it. And that's what's like, it, it was the, f- it's the first time or it was that, that I felt that, that that night, there was a first time almost ever that my gut or my instinct didn't tell me which side I should be leaning towards. Mm. I was like, fuck, I really don't know what to do in this situation right now. And I've never felt like that sort of uncertainty, you know, you yeah. know, when you like come to a crossroads and you're like, uh, do I do this or this? But like inside you're like, mm, I, I really know like what I should do here. Like what the right thing is. Yeah. I got to the point where I was like, I don't actually know what the fuck to do here. And that was really probably the first time that's ever happened. Yeah. I th- and I think it also like you always say, you look blinders and the commit, like the scared of the what ifs. And those are things you're going to have to like start projecting out and talking to people. And if that's London or if that's me or if that's, just the whole team just having like an emergency conference where everyone jumps on the Zoom call real <laughs> quick just so you can hash it out. That's how things get stronger and better in the end of the day, you know? Yeah. My shit is like, a, it's like emotionally things just like... Stop thinking you need to do all this by yourself. Yeah. That's what you need to Things do. just like build up and then, it, I don't know. I don't like, I don't chop it down into parts, you know? It all just like comes at once and then I'm like, oh my God. Then you put it in the meat grinder. <laughs> <just> yeah. <laughs> and I fucking cook up beef. Put this shit on a patty. It's fucked up. All right, we're gonna get through you one day. Is that like how you want me to like interlock fingers right now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like what? big time. You're giving me no angle to work. Do you work feel with this? Here. You feel this power? No, I don't feel good. Just, just do it. That's all you get. No, nah, that's it. That's all I have. That's all the affection you get. Thanks. Is that like the episode? Yeah, I don't really have much left. Let me see what else we got. I was gonna talk about two documentaries that I watched this week. Takashi Six Nine. 
What are you doing? Nothing. Why are you fucking acting weird? <laughs> no, I just saw a text. That was funny. Yeah? Why don't you share with the fucking class? Just keep going. Takashi 6 9 the rapper. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous documentary on him on uh, Showtime. He's a fraud. It's really good. It's a really good documentary. I don't know if I want to, would want to watch that. I think you should. It's called The Making of a Supervillain and like how he came to be this fucking He psych- was like a videotaper for like another rapper and then uh, they go into that or? Not really. They they talk about, not not him from almost like a point of fame, but like they kind of cover the part of where he goes from like nothing to fame like semi quickly. Mm-hmm. But just like, I don't know. It was super interesting. And I don't, I don't care for him as a, an artist. I, I thought he was like one of those like random like SoundCloud rappers or something. Yeah. But like he's not, that that, that what really wasn't his come up. And like they, most of it is covering his like gang affiliation and like how that came to be and how he became like part of one of the fucking actual, like the baddest fucking gangs in the world. And it was like, it was super fucking interesting. It was crazy. Hmm. He's like this fucking diabolical psycho. Yeah. It's good. It was really good. It was like he, he's falling off now, right? No one really cares for him anymore. Uh, well, he went to jail. No, but he came out. He got out, yeah. like made a number one hit, and now shit's like falling off. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, because all of his yeah, it was, it was crazy. I would I would actually like super recommend it, all even right, if you don't I'll like him. Watch. And then I watched the Tiger Woods documentary. I watched that. I didn't realize that came out a little. Dude, he's he is a fucking weirdo. Yeah, I didn't realize how fucking weird he was. Like when shit started going downhill, and he just like started cutting all his best friends off, like out of nowhere. I th- like the blonde chick, his caddy. No, like, no, hold on. Before that blonde, like, I don't think those people were real friends. Like, she was like, the last picture you saw of that blonde chick and him was in high school. Like, there's no proof that she was still, like, one of in his inner circle. I guess. That's like, like if, say, something, like, you became very popular, and then, like, something happened to you, and they made a documentary, and then... Someone from high school was like, yeah, me and Nick, you know, us math class, you know? I don't and know, dude. They, it's just for money. Like, that one guy was like... I know what he was thinking. It's like, dude, you knew him when he was eight. Like that yeah. that old dude. Like I, I guess. think that I when I when I watch documentaries, I think my biggest problem are the people that are talking. The only person I could understand was the caddy. Cause he's like, he was my best man at my wedding. And like that. that was like that's so fucking weird to me. And if he did it with him, then he probably did it with these other people. But I don't really think any of them were really close. And like sometimes Maybe. you're caddy and you don't have that relationship. It's more of a work relationship. You think that like the caddy just loved Tiger and Tiger Dude, never really the loved cat, him. the caddy made eleven million dollars from him. Like, of course he loves Tiger Woods. Yeah, but like, like he just picked a his best really man good... at his wedding. Like that's pretty intense. Just because you're their best man doesn't mean you're their. Yeah, well, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, if you think it was that, but like eleven years, like there's a there's a lot of baggage there, and for him to just be like, "We're done forever," and I'm never talking to you again. Like, you got to be a weirdo for that. But imagine being in the light for. That's true. Your whole life. Yeah, I don't know. And, I never really like. I didn't really know Tiger's background at all. Really, and that was like kind of eye opening to who he was as a person. It's like you just see Tiger Woods, and you're just like, it's it's not even a human. He's just like a thing. He's know? so dominant. Yeah, like I didn't realize how fucking. I like, I knew how dominant he was. Like I was yeah. explaining to Heather. I'm like, do you see them walking with him? Like that doesn't happen. Yeah. Like that big of a crowd. It's like a messiah. Yeah, and just nuts. like the entire world is just following behind him. Dude, he was ripped. Yeah, he was a beast. Yeah. He was like so skinny, and then all of a sudden he just got like jacked out of nowhere. And it's like, okay, Tiger was already the best in the world. Now he can also drive <laughs> in another seventy-two yards because he's ripped. It's fucking ripped. Nah, right, that's enough out of you. I'm ripped. I'm done. Now you look kind of skinny. I haven't worked out. I've worked. I work out like once a week, maybe. I haven't worked out since March. I look kind of skinny. Damn. I don't think I have like any more muscle left on me anymore. I have titties. <laughs> yeah, but like I looked really good like one year ago. Yeah, I can't say the same. Hate to see it. Hate to hear it. Love to be it. Whatever. Uh, like, how do you know that's on now? We're live on the air. Well, I hit, I hit like the record button, and on the back it says recording. I feel like that's like a big fear. I'm not scared of anything. Why'd you take that pillow? That was my pillow. It was like sitting in the middle of us. I got 20 wires wrapped around me. I feel like I'm fucking the Pokemon. Isn't this the 21st century? Tangela. Th- yeah, this is like the best technology they have and right now. Why? Imagine what it was wires. like six years ago. <laughs> like studios that run shit like this, like actual professional ones, they spent like $100,000 to set up a student's fucking studio. And they still stink. They're still getting their ass beat stink by Stink like us. the stonks? It's fucking my stonks right now are not good. Like how bad? Oh my god! <laughs> uh, it's, it's making a little bit, a little bit of a comeback. I got a little bit too risky today. 
How much did you put? Uh, it's not really about what I put. It's more like what I was putting it on. Mm. Just like call, like the calls end on Fridays. So I like, was like, hey, fuck it. We're going to run it for the next 24 hours. And not a good bet. Not a good bet. Can't win them all. Can't win any of them right now. You going to do this intro or? <sighs> I should have got a water bottle. I'm like stuck here for the rest of the next two, 22 minutes. <laughs> Our episode's not going past 22 minutes today. That's impossible. Won't allow 